One of the biggest things that you want to teach your players, if your players can do this, you will avoid a lot of traveling and a lot of turnovers, just needlessly. All right? Biggest thing, it's just called triple threat position. All right? Um, when you get in triple threat position, it's obviously triple threat because you can pass, shoot, or dribble. We want them to be in the same athletic stance that Coach Canfield was in doing all the balls, and we want the ball to be on their strong side hip. So if they're left-handed, they got it on the left side. If they're right-handed, they got it on the right side. And that's just triple threat, okay? Now, if you guys want to control practice, which I'm assuming you're doing by being a coach, you want to control practice, this is a great thing to do every time you want their attention and you don't have to make it a drill, okay? When we do camps, when we do camps, we have what we call a three-whistle deal to represent triple threat. Now, I know uh, you may not have a whistle. You might want to use a magic word, you know, or something. I don't know. Whenever you say this magic word, everybody gets in a triple threat. But we just get, usually go. And all the kids grab a ball. Even if it's rolling on the ground, they grab it, get it up, and they're in triple threat. So now you've gotten their attention. They're not dribbling. And now you're working on triple threat without even doing it. So once you blow that whistle three times or you say a magic word, they get in triple threat, you can go from there. If you want to work on pivoting, pivot on your left foot, pivot on your left foot, all the way in a circle. Okay, now go backwards. And that's actually a reverse pivot in basketball. That's something that's very beneficial that uh, kids need to know, but only a lot of times our advanced kids use it because a lot of times we always teach them to turn forward and we never teach them that they can actually turn backwards, okay? So you can do that, pivot on your left foot, then pivot on your right foot. Why can't we pivot on both feet at the same time? Why can't we do this? Well, those people who talk to you, the officials are gonna blow the whistle and give the ball to the other team. That's why. So you te you're teaching them proper footwork just on the triple threat position. So if you have a whistle and you're gonna use it, I would use three whistles because it represents three things. And tell them, why do we blow the whistle three times? Why three? Because it's triple threat. I can pass, shoot, or dribble from that stance, okay? Um, so I just want to tell you about that. You don't, don't do a separate drill for that, but you, what you might want to do is you might want to teach them. You might want to go around and say, okay, Johnny, can you get in triple threat for me? Or Susie, can you get in triple threat? And you might want to fix them. Okay, get the ball right here on your hip a little bit, bend your knees a little bit, eyes up. And you might just want to go over there and manually fix them and say, okay, now when I do that throughout practice or next week or something, I want you in that same exact stance, okay? Matter of fact, I'm going to take a picture of you, Johnny, with my iPhone, and then I'm going to show you that same picture later on, and you're going to see if you're in that same stance, okay? Just little things like that to make it fun for them. They'll, they'll know what's going on, okay? Uh, so now, with the triple threat, when you are working on stuff, no matter what it is, whether you're working on scrimmaging, three-on-three, three, whatever, any time Bob or Susie catches the ball, what should you be telling them? Get in triple threat. Get in triple threat, okay? It's just a way to protect the basketball. So continue to remind them, okay? We have Dean and Andrew down here who actually play at the high school for us, and they're actually coaching a team, which I commend them for because high school students are very busy, all right? Uh, we have a high academic high school around here and they have a lot of stuff on their plate and they're still finding time to go coach. But I can tell you just by asking them, Dean, do we ever talk about triple threat at the high school? All the time. Because we get players who do this all the time. They just catch it and stand. Stand right here. And uh, you need to always be in triple threat. I mean, it's just obviously you can't use all three every time because maybe you've already used up your dribble and the guy's on you and you can't shoot, but you still need to protect the ball. So anyways, uh, triple threat. Just teach that all year long, all year long. Um, so you want to add anything to that? Just one thing, you know, they don't have to have a basketball to get in triple threat. So if, let's say, uh, you, have, you have three basketballs in the drill, you blow your whistle three times, it's not just the three players that have a basketball down and everybody else is doing this right here. No, everybody gets down with or without a ball. And it, you know, that's one of the things that in basketball, you, you uh, 
the players don't realize you don't need to have a basketball in your hands to get better. You can have an imagination and pretend you have a ball and still get the same uh, type of uh, uh, skills with the player that has a ball. We spend months on this at the high school, but I can just teach you some different things about man-to-man -man defense that you can work on no matter what age you're at. So if you have real young kids, you might want to get the colored wristband, teach them about man-to-man -man or girl-on-girl. -on -girl. Um, so you can get the colored wristbands. Hey, uh, Jennifer, you guard uh, the other girl with the pink wristband all the time. You stay with her, all right? But as you advance through that, what you want to do is teach them some terminology, all right? What we typically do is we split the court in half all the way through, and we call this our midline. All right, and uh, there's no line there, okay, but you might want to lay down a jump rope or something that you can take with it. Don't lay down tape, okay? <laughs> Don't lay down tape, but you might want to lay something down uh, just so that they can see it and they know what you're talking about. This is referred to as the midline. Um, some of the older guys, you probably won't have to. They've been in camp, we've talked about it, or they've uh, been playing a lot and they know. So what we teach the younger kids is you have two hands, okay? What I want you to do, come out here, Dean. What I want you to do is I want you to point to the ball and I want you to point to your man all the time, okay? And you can just start with this, all right? You can just start with this, point to the ball and point to the man. And really what it works on is it works on their head positioning. So that's part of the key sometimes is they just don't have their head in the right spot. If I'm guarding, if I'm guarding Coach Canfield, where do you think I'm going to look if I'm a young kid? I'm going to look right at him. So therefore, I'm, I might be pointing, but I don't know where I'm pointing at the ball. So you, it helps get their head in the right position. Point at the ball, point at the man. Don't worry about where they are on the court right now. Just point at ball, point at man. Point at ball, point at man. If I'm looking right here and Dean dribbles down, now I'm not pointing at it. Okay? So you can do different things like that. Okay? So uh, just keep that in mind. Point to the ball, point to the man. We used to, uh, with the first graders I had, we, the little boys that I had, you know, they like those little toy guns. We just said, get your guns up, get your guns up, pointing at that one, pointing at that one. Or you're the sheriff in town, you know, whatever, okay? So point to the ball, point to your man. So if your man moves, your gun moves, okay? But you have to teach them, look in the middle of them. Look right between them so you can see both. Now, if I stand here and he goes that way, I can't see him anymore. I'm probably just going to look at the ball. Okay, so you've got to teach him, hey, when your man moves, you move. But don't move your head. Okay, so just different things like that. That helps him with man to man because what are they going to do in a zone? They're going to go like this. They're just going to stand here. And they're just going to guard a spot and be a statue and stuff. But now you're teaching them that there's more going on on the basketball court. So you can start real simple. Um, just with that, okay, just with that. Uh, and then you can advance uh, beyond this, all right? What we try to tell, let's say I'm guarding Coach Canfield. You don't have the ball. You don't have the ball. So I'm guarding Coach Canfield. What we want to tell him is this. Hey, if you're guarding a guy that is not on the side of the ball, you're on the midline. If you're guarding a guy that is over here by the ball, then you're guarding him or you're right next to him, okay? But if he's all the way across the court, then you're not going to be all the way across the court because you can't help your teammate if he goes to the basket, okay? Now, uh, when they said no double teaming, uh, obviously I know that they meant trapping, but there, there are at times where if Dean gets beat, and I come over and help, that could be construed as double teaming. So I hope you have some referees that can differentiate between that, that you weren't intentionally trying to trap on that. It just happened that way. Um, that you had one guy in legal guarding position and the other guy trying to recover, but I'm assuming you'll have to get out of that real quickly before he blows the whistle. So uh, you can advance past that. Now, one thing we do here at the high school, that Coach Canfield does, is he'll just do this, two on one. And he'll say, okay, uh, I'm actually guarding Coach Canfield, and Dean will be over there, okay? So I'm guarding him. I'm here on the midline. Dean starts to come in, and then I've got to be ready to try to help, and then Dean will go back out, and then 
I'm still back on the midline, and he throws to Coach Canfield. That's my man, and now I come guard. Okay, then maybe Coach Canfield throws it back to Dean, and then I got to get back over here. So where, what do you see my movement doing? Throw the ball back to Coach. What do you see me doing? Throw it again. What am I basically following? Right. So one of the things we tell the kids is every time the ball is passed, you move. You don't stay in that spot. You move. So he passes the ball. Now I'm over here. I, now I'm on ball side, but he passes it over there. Now I'm on the midline. So that's when you get beat. That's when we get beat here at the high school is when we have kids who relax for a second and don't move with the basketball. So every time we say actually jump to the ball, okay? So move to the basketball. So even if I'm guarding Dean and he throws that way, I go towards the ball and then I'll pick up Dean because I want to go to try to help, okay? So uh, just some simple things about man-to-man, -man, okay? Our philosophy up here at the high school is if I'm guarding Coach Canfield, I want to try to force him to the sideline or the baseline. When a person gets in here in the middle of the paint, they have all different types of options, okay? I want to use the baseline and the sideline as an extra defender. So that's why we try to force them that way. Now we tell our kids that we want this foot to be up so the advanced kids, you can start working on their feet and stuff, but we don't want to do this because then you give him a direct path to the basket. Just shade him on this side so that he can see, okay, you're going to let me go there a little bit, so I'll go that way. But we don't want to try to let them go back to the middle because too many things happen in the middle. Um, other coaches are different way. We're kind of like economists. You know, we all have our different opinions, and they just that's my opinion. Um, but uh, your angles are limited. I mean, the, the way I look at it is, have you ever tried to catch a dog in the backyard, a real frisky dog in the backyard? I doubt you just let him come out here in the middle of the yard and you just chase him around in a big circle. I bet you try to corner him in the fence, right? So that's typically what we try to do with, uh, with man to man. Now, obviously you can add more guys out here, but the general principle of man to man with these young kids is see if you can get them to point at both and still guard their man, but yet help their teammate, okay? So that would be kind of the main concept. Uh, it's real easy to tell when they get here who's been playing zone. Okay, we actually run a zone up here, but there are times for it. We don't run it the whole game. We run it at different times where we think maybe uh, uh, they're not as good when we're running zone or they can't shoot the ball from the perimeter as well. And we want to protect the basket. Just different reasons, but I would try to at least teach your kids man to man to start with. Okay, want to add anything? No? Okay. Uh, so you can teach them about the midline. You can teach them about, you know, uh, some people call it strong side. Strong side is with the ball. Weak side is over there. So strong side, weak side, or you can call it ball side or help side. Uh, some people call it that. But uh, it's real easy. So you guys are going to have eight kids. Y'all could have four kids out here, and you could be watching four on offense and four on defense and watch the whole thing. But this is what I recommend. If you're going to work on something like defense, or you're going to work on uh, uh, playing man-to-man -man defense, tell the offense don't dribble to start with. Tell them not to dribble. Tell them to pass it, catch it, and get in triple threat. Okay? And tell the defense you don't touch the ball. Don't touch it right now. We need to work on defense. Don't touch it. Give them some restrictions. When you go to practice, if you don't give them guidelines like that, it's going to be a free-for-all. Johnny's going to be out here. He's going to be a better basketball player than Susie Sunshine right here. And as soon as she grabs it, he's going to take it. Hey, drill's over. I got that. Okay? And he's going to be pounding his chest and all that stuff. So, you know, teach them. Some, give them some guidelines to use. Okay? So you're going to have kids at different levels. So make sure that you give them some restrictions on that. 